Right, so in this video, we are going to talk about how a pen works in a list because the last video got a little bit long. But for those of you who want their minds blown, I want to even give you a better solution for the problem with the whole splitting thing and then storing as a product, price, and condition. So remember, we had data, Xbox 360, product, 150, price, condition, new. There is even an easier way to do it. I can say product, I can say comma price, and I can say condition and check this magic out. And I'm gonna say data dot split that by uh, pipe and boom, we're done. So now product is the first element from that list, right? If I show you data dot split by pipe, what you get is first element, second element, third element. So the first element maps to this product, right? It, this, product right there, price ends up mapping itself to 150, condition ends up mapping itself to new. So go check it out. It's also kind of known as the concept of tuple unpacking. Really, really advanced concept. We're not gonna get to it till maybe an intermediate or advanced course. But um, yeah, just something a little fun to blow your mind and look at how efficient Python lets you do things, right, efficiently. So really simple way. Uh, but hopefully this shows you the power of how you can combine lists with the whole idea of slicing and all that. Now, one of the com most common things I wanna show you is this whole thing called dot append, okay? It's a method that you can use on a list, very common method, and this is one of the reasons why lists are a lot more useful than strings or any other thing. Okay, oh, let me just be clear. It's not that strings are not useful or lists are more useful, but the reason why lists are so awesome is because of that. That's what makes them unique, okay? So let me give you uh, some list with, um, sure, let's give you racers, or let's do something simple. Let's do numbers, okay? Now, there's a really easy way to grow this list, so I wanna keep adding some numbers to this list. Well. How do I do that? What if I wanna add some number to this list? I know how to access each of these numbers. I know how to slice each of these numbers and get a range. I know how to step and slice and get ranges at the same time. I know how to reverse the list. But what if I wanna add more things into the list or change existing things in the list? Well, to add things in the list, we use dot append, okay? Append meaning add something to the end, hence append. Prepend add something to the beginning. So we wanna add something right over here in front of the five. So let me do six. And if I show you numbers, and now you have a bigger list. Let's say I wanted to add another thing. I'll just say append seven. Now if I show you numbers, now the numbers has grown bigger. You got seven. All right, so we're using this new app that you're creating where once your friends raced, you put them in the list, but let's say more of your friends get excited. They're like, wow, this app is amazing. We wanna race too, so you can put us in there. But you're like, I already, the list only takes in three people. Well, append lets you add in more people, right? So you store that data, you keep it there, and then you use append to add more of your friends into the list. What's also nicer is you can use a loop to add things into the list, okay? So for example, I can say for i in range 100, if I say print i, well, what is that gonna do? It's gonna go all the way and print up to 100, okay? So I'm gonna stop this right here, but you get the point. It's basically range, right? What is range? Just to show you range of 10, that's effectively just a list 10. Okay, and then we kind of go through it and we print out each of those numbers. I'm gonna get more into loops in the later video, but just this is just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of how we use lists. So for example, every time I, so first time I is zero, then I is one, then I is two, then I is three, and we keep doing that, right? So what can I say? I can say, um, because effectively, right, since this is a list, uh, now I can explain to you guys a little bit more about loops. Since range is really just a list, right? I'm calling list on it because in Python 3, they hide it from you and you'll learn why later. But if I call list on it, it shows me what range 10 looks like. And range 10 happens to just be a list. 
And list is what allows you to make that for loop, okay, that you've been making while you, when you were creating your original turtle games. So what happens is that the first time going through the, this list, right, let's say, let's just make a smaller list here for now. Um, when we're going through the loop, i is zero the first time. And then we call uh, the print function right here, right? So i is zero the first time, and then we print zero. Then i is one, because it's the second element from the list. And so then we print one out to the screen, then i is two. And then you get two here. And then we print out two at the bottom. Okay, so that's how loop runs, right? The indented code keeps running over and over again. So that's really what allows you to do a loop. It's actually a secret list in the background. And so that's why you go from zero to 100 here, right? Now, if I wanted to take that list that I had at the top called numbers and keep adding a lot of numbers to it, say up to 30, uh, instead of keep having to manually do it, well, here's a nice way to do it. I can say for I in range, uh, let's see, 14, or uh, let's say, or uh, I wanna start my range, okay? So if I just showed you, you can also give a start and a stop to range. So let's say I wanna start my range from eight and go up to, but not including 20 or 21. So I go from eight to 20, right? So these are the numbers I wanna add, okay? So let's do for number in range <clears throat> eight and 21. And I'm not using I, I'm using the variable number, just so you guys know that you can't, you don't have to use, you know, I is not some magical built-in thing that you have to use. Use a variable that makes more sense. In this case, since I'm going through looping and it's really numbers, and now you guys know that I turns into a number, it just makes more sense to call it a number. So then you're like, oh yeah, this will just be eight the first time, then it'll be nine, then it'll be 10, then it'll be 11, and then it'll be 12, right? So let's go back. So let's replace this with just number. And then let's say numbers dot append. And to the numbers list, I want to keep appending each number. Okay, so the first time I'm going to append number is going to be eight. So then I'm going to append eight. And so it's going to add eight to my numbers list, then numbers is number is going to be nine and then is going to append nine here. Then number is going to be 10 is going to go append a 10. Okay, so let's do it like this. Let's replace this bad boy with number. Let's run it. Let's take a look at our list and voila, you see it goes from one and all the way to 20. Okay. Um, and if these were your friends and we wanted to see you know, in the reverse order, like from losers to winners, instead of winners to losers in a race, I would be able to do simply this trick, which says start by default, stop by default, and then step by negative one. So that answers that question, right? Okay, cool. So a lot of stuff, but hopefully it's making sense and hopefully lists are making more sense and append is making more sense, right? Append is one of the most useful things. So I want you to remember append and we'll come back to it and we'll probably build more things with it, okay? I'll have a project for you guys as well where you're gonna get to practice it more. For now, come up with something cool, whatever silly idea or a fun idea that you have, code it up, something simple, post it in the comments below in the YouTube one or my website here, okay, cleverprogrammer.com. Either way, it's fine. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.